Well, folks, we've got a great session in store for you today. John Bartos is the owner and operator of True Staff. He runs a huge business down in Cincinnati, Ohio. He just informed me that it's largely contract recruiting based. The guy has uh, run one of the most successful MRI offices on the planet prior to, to kind of moving over to this True Staff company. And uh, like I said, John Bartos, what I love about this guy is not only is he down there running a desk and, and knocking it out of the park, he goes out to events like uh, NAPS, like the Four Dice Forum, like so many of our conventions that he's come and spoken to our customers like you. Uh, he comes out and helps educate recruiters on being better and achieving goals. He sells a product called the RPM Dashboard that is a killer tool that allows you and helps you pinpoint what you do very well. It helps you pinpoint what you do maybe not so well, but even more so, what it does is it gives you the media training and development to get better, to get to where you want to be and to achieve what you can achieve in this business you're so lucky to be squarely placed in. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the incomparable Mr. John Bachos. Thanks, Todd. I certainly appreciate it. Hey, I hope everybody is having not only a great day, but you're going to have an unbelievable afternoon because I tell you what, you should be very excited about what 2013 is going to do, not only for you, your organization, but the start of something great for a long, long time here. Uh, I just had to write a blog uh, last night and was talking about how do I get to recruiting success so I can get to life significance. And I don't know if anybody read the book from Bob Buford called Halftime. Bob uh, really did well uh, through his career. And by the age of 40, he was a multimillionaire. And what he found out that is once he became successful at his career, he could then take time to be successful in life, significant, meaning, meaning spending his time to make the world a better place. And what Bob did is he took some monster churches and helped them be more effective and uh, well, provide the message to other folks. But the whole point for Bob Buford was this. I mean, you've got to be successful in career, in your career, so that you have the ability, really an easier ability, if you will, to truly have life significance and give back and do the things you want to do. So one of the first things I want to ask you guys from a question perspective, and we're going to jump right into seeing recruiting success in a few minutes, what would you guys do to make an impact on yourself in your world to have life significance? My blog I just put out, uh, by the way, if you go to johnbartos.com, J-O-N-B-A-R-T-O-S.com, you'll see the blog on the right-hand side, also all sorts of other free white papers and things you guys can have. But I talk about that transition from being successful to being significant in life. And I think that's something we all should put as a goal because it's not all about having the most cars and the biggest houses and all that great stuff. You know, that's nice. And we all like that stuff. And we like those big paychecks. What can we do to transition? Let's get there fast. Be successful. And then how do we become significant in life and impact areas of the world that we never thought of? So take a look at that blog, guys. But today, we're going to talk about the Pareto principles to reaching your potential. Now, now uh, somebody asked me, who is this Pareto guy? I've heard of the 80-20 rule, but who is this Pareto guy anyways? And it's kind of interesting because uh, Vil, I'm probably going to mispronounce his name, but his name was Vilfredo Federico the Moscow Pareto. He was an Italian engineer sociologist economist. He was born in 1848 and in August of 1923 he passed on. But he made one of the most important notices out there and he noticed that in Italy that 20 percent of the people owned 80 percent of the land. Thus the Pareto efficiency, the Pareto principle was born. Now, he took that 2080 rule, if you will, to everything. He took it to success in an organization. And almost everywhere you can think of where people are being productive, companies are being productive, whatever it is, that 20% of the people get 80% of the results. Today, we're going to talk about this. How do we focus on the 20% of the activities that we do in this recruiting game to give us 80% of those results? 
and I'm going to go over those heavily and in depth for you. So what do I really need to focus on? This, the recruiting process is so wide. There's so many things we've got to do. We've got to prep. We've got to debrief. We've got to plan. We've got to make sure our presentation is good, our recruiting presentation. We've got to get new job orders coming in, make them into search assignments. There's all sorts of things we have to do. But what do we really have to do to achieve recruiting success? To focus on those very few things. And that's what I want to talk about today. What are the most important things? If I'm going to improve on something, what do they have to be for me to be successful in recruiting so I go ahead and be significant in life? Now, uh, the I use a clock and a compass because those are such huge symbols. You know, the clock in terms of am I spending enough time doing the right things? The, company, the compass certainly means am I in the right direction? Am I focusing on the right things I need to do during the time I, I actually have during the day? So, you know, if you look at attaining recruiting goals and achieving maximum performance, am I doing the right things and I doing them when I need to do them? And here's a scary fact, and you've probably heard of this before from me if you've heard any of my seminars, conferences, conference calls. The unfortunate thing about this business, it, it is a, you know, it's a tough business. That's not hard. Our business is not hard, meaning, I mean, it's not hard to do. It's not like you're programming. It's not like you're uh, trying to figure out nuclear science here. So it's not hard, but it's tough because there's so many things to do, and it's an activity-oriented business. I can tell you right now in my business, very quickly, the folks who are doing the highest activity and who are the best at those Pareto activities, those 20% activities are getting 80% of the results, are by far the top producers in my organization. But here's the deal. Those folks, the folks with the highest activity as well as working on the, the Pareto activities will be the highest producer in any organization. I mean, that's, that's no doubt about it. But the question that's often asked, okay, why do so many people fail in this business when they just start? I don't get it. What, I mean, what's the, the story there? I mean, um, matter of fact, the statistics were a few years ago that uh, only 10 to 15 percent of the people who start in recruiting from day one, not, not joining a new company and were experienced recruiters before or account executives, search consultants, but about 15 percent make it through their first year uh, of, of being in this industry. And that's really unfortunate. Well, it, it, not, not only do we have the problem of people making in this business, now, how, how do I get from just surviving out there, meaning I'm, I'm making a placement every now and then, and I'm getting some money coming in, and you determine where you're at, uh, obviously. How do I take it from I'm just surviving to I am being so successful in this business, I can't count the money I'm making? That's where you start seeing excitement, enthusiasm, passion for what we actually do. So how do I go not only from making it the first year, but surviving, and then surviving to thriving? You know, what do, we, uh, what do we have to do to ensure that extraordinary performance? And I will commit to you today that that is simply focusing on the Pareto activities to be successful. Let's jump on those here real quick. Now, Pareto activities, those are the 20% of the activities that produce 80% of the results. Um, and I, I actually listed this in order for you. All right, and let's talk about in depth each one of these things. I'm also on a panel of million dollar producers every single month where we actually look the first Thursday of each month, we analyze how each individual is doing. So what happens, these 12 members will go one by one, uh, we'll take a look at how well they did the prior month, what they have forecasted this month, and we take a look at one or two things that they need to do to improve to help them get better at what they do. And again, the whole goal of this group of million dollar producers, 12 of them, that we work with as an accountability group, is how quickly can they get significant in life versus just being successful. So our goal is get them successful fast so they can be significant in their neighborhood, in their preschool, or whatever area of life they want to make a major impact on. All of them agree that the number one thing is getting great search assignments, which is marketing, getting better at marketing. You know, and, and also uh, during the development, if you will, of my software organization called Revenue Performance Management and the tool itself called the RPM Dashboard, I realized that one metric told me the success or failure uh, of almost any individual recruiter or individual recruiting company. And that metric was the job order to placement ratio, which further hits this home. Here's what that means. 
This means how many job orders that a company gets and works on, or a recruiter gets and works on, the how many actual placements they make. Now, I could tell you some stories. I had one of my account executives come to me and say, John, you know what? Uh, I do pretty well with you. I, I make about a buck twenty a year. You know what? I need to double my income. I have my kids going to private schools next year, and I need to double my income. The, I, I could have looked at her activity and said, okay, uh, can you double your phone calls? <laughs> and that's the cop-out of management. Double your activity and you'll double your, 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 your results. And, and obviously you will, but how about this? Why don't we figure out what's going wrong and then solve that problem? Anyways, Paula came to me. We looked at all her ratios. Her job order to placement ratio was 10 to 1. What that means was she was working on 10 different job orders and made one placement out of 10 through the last 12 months. All we had to do is give her some serious questions for her clients to answer before she'd ever work on a job order, which actually further qualified that job order. Long story short, she took it from 10 to 1 to 2 to 1 and spending less activity on the phone, less phone calls, less recruiting calls, less time in the office, she doubled her income starting in 90 days. Now, so this shares with you the importance of getting great work. If you don't have great work now, go to johnbartos.com, get on my website, get the job order matrix that Bob Marshall actually developed and I kind of fine-tuned. Bob, a pioneer in this industry, said you needed great quality job orders, you know, 25 years ago. And I am one of his biggest fans because of that today. But if you get great search assignments that you're working on and don't work on average stuff, and in my definition of a great search assignment is, if you find a good candidate, they will get hired. Not, you know, that went to their brother, or not that, oh, another recruiting firm got it. But a good search assignment is if you find a great quality candidate that matches with skill sets, compensation, and everything else, they will get hired. So the number one Pareto activity to improve on in any recruiting game today is really the job order to placement ratio, which is getting better search assignments. And you know what? You can do that by simply going to your existing clients and asking them to make changes. I was working with a major recruiting firm about a month and a half ago, and they were getting a lot of contingent searches, which is great. We all like contingent searches. They send them out to a lot of people. And then you got a bunch of people throwing stuff against the wall, hoping it's going to stick. My suggestion then were this. Go back to one of those clients and say, Uncle, I'd like you to give me the next search in a 30-day exclusive. And here's why you're going to want to do that. Number one, when you give it to all these other recruiters out there, you know, it's a race, so everybody throws stuff against the wall and hope it sticks. Quality control goes out the window, and, and unfortunately what happens is Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, you become quality control, and you've got to look through a thousand resumes. But really what nobody's really doing is the heavy lifting. Yeah, nobody's really going after the gainfully employed, uh, gainfully employed folks who are working for a competitor, knocking the cover off the ball, and that's who you need really to come to your organization to help your organization be better. Give me 30 days so I can have exclusivity, and then after that, call in the dogs. Call, you know, let, let them come back in the process. But that gives me enough time to give you the right people so you can make a decision on the best of the best in the marketplace versus a decision on the best player out of the worst available, which is when every contingent recruiter starts sending in the low-hanging fruit. So if you can focus on only that activity, the marketing activities, <clears throat> and getting better search assignments, we can double your income very, very quickly, trust me. And that's really the key. This is the reason why Spencer Stewart, Heidrich and Struggles, Christian Timbers, a lot of the retained firms do very, very well because their job orders are money down. Their search assignments, somebody puts some cash down. And you know what? When somebody's putting cash down, the quality of the job order goes through the roof. So it's real important to take a look at this Pareto activity. Let's look at the, in, 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 in priority order, let's look at the number two Pareto activity, which is recruiting, getting great at recruiting. So once you have a really, really good quality job order, you, you want to make sure that everybody you talk to from a candidate perspective, you're attracting in. You're attracting them for this wonderful opportunity you just got from one of your good clients. And, and a lot of it, uh, from a recruiting perspective, the ratio to look at, and you can call it many things, but I'll explain it to you. The ratio is called the candidate presentation. How many recruiting presentations you're making to a live candidate, not voicemail, not email, not social media, 
but you're actually talking to a candidate on the phone, you're presenting the opportunity to how many of those candidates raise their hand and say, yeah, coach, it's me, put me in the game. I want to be part of this organization. Yeah, I, my company isn't anything like that. I would love to work there. So the way to take a look at your number two Pareto activity in recruiting is this. Are you currently selling the opportunity or are you just reading a job description off? One of the things I like to do with new recruiters coming to any organization is say, okay, don't forget you've got 100,000 recruiters trying to recruit, recruit your candidates out there. I bet you they got a call this week from two other recruiters as well trying to recruit for their job. Now here's your question. Why would they take a look at your opportunity that you're recruiting on opposed to all the other ones? And most of the time, if you simply listen to somebody do a recruiting presentation, you're going to say, okay, so what? Yeah, it's not a big deal. So what? And if you can say that with your recruiting presentation and the facts about your company, that recruiting presentation is not strong enough. Here's a suggestion. Make sure you take a look at your recruiting presentation and give two or three bullet points of why they should work for your client company or that position that nobody else would know, nobody else would have, that are huge selling points for somebody's career or their current situation. You know, one of the clients that I work with, uh, you, got, you can work remotely. So, so one of the things we say is, you know what, how would you like to work with one of the fastest growing organizations out there, have a career path unmatched by any organization of their competitors, and not only that, have the chance to work from your home, your cottage, your boat on the ocean. Now, I just said that out there, but I'm painting the picture very specifically of what working for this organization is going to look like. So if you take a look at that, the number two parade of activity, getting great at presenting your opportunity to your candidates, is going to be critical. And it's not about three to five years of engineering or four to seven implementations or whatever the statistics you're naming, because the people you're calling probably have that skill set already. But what they don't have is you painting them the picture of what their life could be like at this new organization. And it doesn't have to be about a remote situ situation. It could be about all sorts of things that the benefit to the candidate. So keep that in mind when you're looking at how to get better at recruiting. But I guarantee you, if you got great at marketing and only took search assignments and job orders that you were guaranteed to make placements at, and then number two, everybody you talk to raised their hand and said, hey coach, put me into the game. I want to come into the game. It sounds too good. I want to be part of this winning team. If you had those two skills alone, you win the game. That's where the success comes into. Now a far third, by the way, Pareto activity as you see it, is the matching skills. Uh, and this is a problem where you're really understanding, or, or advantage, is you're really understanding what your client is looking for. So if you send a candidate in, a submittal, and you present that candidate to your client, and your client does not interview them, that's a problem. That means you really don't understand what your client's looking for. What you need to shoot for is everybody you send into this opportunity or your client's opportunity, your client's interviewing them, every single one of them, because you understand what your client is looking for better than anybody. And how do you do this? Well, number one, you take a great job order. You fill out a lot of information. And if you don't have the right questions to ask, go to johnbartos.com, jump on that 20-point search assignment form. Just, I think it's four bucks or three bucks on my website. But that gives you enough information to ask those tough questions so you know what they're looking for. Guys, here's the difference. The ratio there is your submittals to send out ratio that tells you how good you are there at that skill set. If I'm at two to one right now, just two to one, meaning every two submittals I send in, I get one interview. If I take that down to one to one, do you guys know what that does with your revenue? Guys, it's simple math. It doubles it. It doubles it. So, so if you take a look at what we're talking about, we're breaking down the Pareto activities, marketing, recruiting, how to match all these things that are out there. And those are the top three, but they come down significantly in terms of Pareto. If you can master just only those three, and you deliver upon what you say you're going to deliver on, this game gets really simple, and we get you successful in recruiting, so now you can spend time on getting significant in life. Now, the other things up here we're going to go through quick. Now, you got to influence decisions, building trusted advisor relationships. That's the skill set. Now, you'll probably go to conferences on how to do that, blah, 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 real important. It is important, but not as important as the top three. 
marketing skills, recruiting skills, and matching skills. You do those three right, you're going to win the game every single time. Influencing decisions is very important, building that trusted advisor relationships. By the way, the, the best way to build a trusted advisor relationships is number one, ask lots of questions and understand. And then number two, do what you say you're going to do. I think the biggest flaw in the recruiting industry is we never do what we say we're going to do. Candidates never hear back from us. Clients never get delivery when we say we're going to deliver. Just do what you say you're going to do and set expectations right, and then you'll do well there. Another good aspect from a Pareto skill, but it comes far number five, is really using technology to your advantage. Now, today with uh, job alerts and candidate alerts on the job boards, now with Indeed, now with Watch That Page, now with social media, now with backdoor Google into LinkedIn, you can do anything with technology. Remember the guys, remember the days when we had to call a company and say, hey, uh, Miss Gatekeeper, Miss Secretary, or, or Mr. Whoever, uh, who is your chemical engineering manager in charge of mixes? Who is your regional manager in your Northeast? Remember that? That was 15 years ago only. We had no idea who the people were. We had to call into a gatekeeper, somehow finagle our way past that gatekeeper to get to the people we needed to get to. Guess what? If you know how to use Google backdoor to LinkedIn, Jigsaw. If you know how to use Zoom CE, to Zoom Info CE division, which is free, you have access to everybody without even paying a dime. So get good at this technology so you have those names so you don't have to go through a gatekeeper anymore. Because 90% of most industries now are on Jigsaw, Zoom Info, or LinkedIn, and now you get advantage of those very specific tools to get you where you need to get to. And then obviously planning skills, you've got to be very good at planning, making sure your call's ready to go, an organization for the day. Planning meaning you have your 80 calls ready to make already before you get there, and you're not doing your research and your recruiting and your marketing all at the same time. The people who do all their activities at the same time average about 20 calls a day. The people who are well planned make 80 to 100, and the efficiency goes up times three if you're planned and have great planning skills and use technology and you're organized. So the reason I want to share that stuff with you is a Pareto activities are super important. Circle the activities that you need to work on and maybe focus a little bit on what can help you get better at what you do. And obviously having great tools uh, like, a, like a great CRM, like Big Bill or software to help you guys stay organized and plan is going to help you along the way. Now there's some other factors that lead to success. If you're a recruiting manager, this is going to be a, a, a importance to you like you would not believe. And when I sit down with top, org, uh, top executives, owners of an organization, I don't care if you've got 400 recruiters that work with you, 100 or two, some of the things to put in place have to be basic processes. Uh, you know, number one, making sure you hire right based on setting expectations. Any, anytime I, I talk to a manager trying to hire people, I set expectations. Guys, this is the toughest industry in the world. You've got to be planned before you get to work. You've got to execute on 80 calls a day. You've got to be good at what you're talking about. You've got to learn your industry. But guess what? That's what the business is going to be like. If you want to make 20 phone calls a day and, and, and see all the success in the world, that isn't going to happen. Typically, what we're seeing still today is a million dollar producers, a half million dollar producers, or more in contract staffing or permanent placement are still seeing high volumes on the phone. Now, they are doing high email volume, too. And they're doing high volume on social media, LinkedIn, but they're also still seeing three and a half, four, four and a half hours of phone time a day. That's still there. So setting those expectations right when somebody comes on board is important. Now, now everybody can get better at what we do. What I love about this is I see professional baseball players have a swing coach, a hitting coach. I see Tiger Woods, David Duvall, I see Phil Mickelson have swing coaches and they work with their coaches every week. Guys, we can all get better at what we do as well, and we've got to continue to sharpen that saw to get better at making life a little easier for us. So the training development part is absolutely critical. Now, I mentioned processes. Number three is we've got to have strong planning, recruiting, and business development processes of what we execute. If you don't have great processes, send me an email. Go to johnbartos.com, J-O-N-B-A-R-T-O-S.com, and I'll give you my processes, and I think they cost four bucks, you know, so get my processes, and if you send me an email, I'll probably send them to you for free, but use process to execute on 
So find out what other people are doing that's very, very effective. Use your process, their processes, and make sure when you execute a process, you get the most effective one that works for you. Now, you got to set goals. And typically, if I had you for two days, the first thing I do for two hours is I'd sit down and set your life goals with you. So we know exactly what you want to achieve in life, how you want to achieve it, and why. What is the thing that's going to make you walk through a brick wall in order to achieve? What's the thing when you run into an insurmountable issue, what we're going to do to get over or around that issue to keep being successful? Guys, life happens. Every day, change happens. Bad news happens with everybody. Uh, you name it, good news happens with everybody. But you know what? That's just little things that get in our way. We need to make sure we go around those. But your why is why you do things on a daily basis will keep you going there. Guys, I, can't, I hate to keep mentioning this. I'm, trying, I'm not trying to sell my website, I swear to God. There's a goal-setting worksheet. If you want to send me an email or go on my website, I'll give you for free. It's a 38-page document, how to set the goals properly if you haven't done that this year. Matter of fact, I'd suggest you go out and sit that down with your spouse, significant other, your family, set family goals together so they're all on the same page, helping you guys be successful. Again, my goal is to help you get recruiting success immediately, very, very quickly, so you can go on to be significant in life. Now, I'm going to go very, very quickly. One of the things that most people don't have, though, is a tool that tells them how they, how they do it. I know we all go to these conferences, and I, I think I spoke at 24 events last year. And I told my wife I'm going to narrow that down to 12 this year. And I'm going to South Africa next month. I'm in Orlando later this week, all over the place. But the whole, you know, the whole idea is we go to these conferences think we're going to get better. You know what? At the conferences, we can learn all sorts of different things to get better at. But we typically go to the things we want to hear, not, not what's going to make me better. The exciting thing about technology tools that are of value, are, are value to you today is they're like GPS. You know, I had to go to an event in, uh, to, uh, actually it was uh, uh, next to Toledo, Sandusky, but I thought I was going to Toledo. So long story short, I punched in Sandusky, but I took my car towards Toledo. Well, about an hour into the trip, my GPS started beeping and said, John, you're going the wrong direction. You're going to end up a, an hour away from your place if you keep going in the same direction. So you're going in the wrong direction. It told me to take a right on this little road. It took me to a farming community. Voila, I'm on another highway, and I, I make it to Sandusky on time. But the whole point is you have tools available to you as well that will do this for you. And, uh, and tools like GPS, uh, GPS help you understand what you do well, what you don't uh, do well, but more importantly, it will help you get the training and development you need to get better at this. Uh, in a combination of Big Biller software and the RPM dashboard can give you exactly that. Now, I'm not going to give you a big, long-eared uh, advantages to using these, these dual products together, but trust me, most people on the RPM dashboard know, know exactly what they're doing well, know exactly what the Pareto deficiencies are, but they get training in development every week. They get video-based training on how to get better at that Pareto activity so they can quickly get to recruiting success to get on the road to life success. And I love that journey of life success because it's not about making more placements, guys. It's, it's about the journey to life success and what we're all here together to do. So basically, with a combination of Big Bill and RPM Dashboard, you know, it'll help you set your personal goals. It'll calculate the metrics you need to achieve those goals. It'll help you see a report card of what you're doing well, what you're not doing well. But bottom line, you get immediate training development of how to get better at what you're doing to get on that journey to life success. So, I mean, there's a lot of people all over the world using these combination of tools, specifically the dashboard, and it does a lot of things for people. We're seeing new hires get up to speed 50% more. We're seeing the Pareto principle where 20% in an organization produces 80% of the results, that getting reversed, meaning 80% of the people are hitting their numbers now. And we're seeing people really with that aha moment where they're saying, oh, I didn't realize that my matching skills were so bad. I better know my client's demands better, therefore improve that ratio and significantly improve my results starting as early as 30 days away. So, so a lot of great news that's going on. I just want to share with you, and I know we're, we're running out of time here, but I wanted to share with you this. There's things available to you today by using the right processes and the right tools and setting personal goals that can really help you get to personal recruiting success. 
And ladies and gentlemen, it's not about making more phone calls. Oh, some of you it may be. If you're making three phone calls a day and, and wanting to make 400 grand a year in this business, well, good luck to you. I, I'm not saying you can't do that, but I would say you're pretty effective on those four calls that you do make during the day. But the whole point being is it's typically not about activity levels. What it's typically about is finding out what you're doing well, what you're not doing well, and then focusing on those Pareto activities, the marketing skills, making sure I have those job orders that are, are not only exclusive, but you know you're going to make a placement when you find the right talent. Number two, it's about recruiting skills. So everybody you talk to is so fired up about the opportunity that they're raising their hand and saying, Coach, get me in the game. I want that opportunity. You know, it's, it's really about the matching skills. So you know what your client wants so well that everybody you send out the interviews because he knows you know what he's looking for. And everybody, it's just a given he's going to interview because you found him and you know his stuff. It's about those things. But I want to share with you this. Guys, I, I want, and, and I trust me, I want you guys to get successful as soon as possible. I'd love to be on the journey with you, but if not, I, I want you to see success because if we can get you to achieving life significance, this world becomes so much better off. And based on the statistics for 2013, guys, you have no idea. This economy is going to start cranking. 38% of the companies can't find qualified candidates. Your clients need you more now than ever before in history, and there's never been a better time to be part of this great recruiting and staffing industry that we're in, and I look forward to joining your journey with you to life success. Todd. Excellent. John, you never disappoint. Thanks so much uh, for that. If there are any questions at the moment, folks, go ahead and chime in. Just click on the Q&A or questions section and type in a question for John. Please keep it to you know what we talked about today. Uh, so, John, I wanted to ask, you know, since the last time we talked, you, you, you've, uh, you've gone through a little bit of change down there in, in, uh, in your southern Ohio business. What is it that you guys are seeing the most success in, in, in out there in the industry? I mean, I know you're in the, I believe you're in the medical device niche these days. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go through the whole thing and what we're doing. That's, that's a great question, Tom. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, here's my, I sold my business December 31st, Jonathan Scott International, of 14 years. I wow. uh, had a couple companies come to the table, and the reason why they were very attracted to me is we did a lot of PERM in the healthcare IT space, EMR, EMR staffing, as well as SAP space. Well, um, a company called True Staff out of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, purchased me and my company. I became president of the two organizations together under True Staff Solutions. And our goal is to go from 100 million to 500 million in the next four years. And that will be selling permanent placement, also contract staffing to SAP, uh, uh, the healthcare IT space, as well as uh, we're doing a, we have a business unit that does business intelligence as well. So we're very excited about the aggressive cool. growth. So those uh, external recruiters who want to join a super fast growing organization with more excitement and more training development than we ever thought, be happy to give me a call. But, but Todd, here's some of the things we're seeing right now that's really opening my eyes as we're out there. Um, we're talking, we're, we're getting face-to-face -face with a lot of our clients, and what that allows us to do now uh, versus just a phone relationship is really see the other things in organizations that we didn't have visibility to by going in, understanding the organization, and asking great trusted advisor questions. So number one, we're meeting them face-to-face -face and doing facility tours to really understand because I want to develop that trusted advisor relationship where even if they can't use me, I can get them over to you know, MRI of Fresno, California, or whoever focuses on that specific niche that they're looking for. Right. But what we're seeing too is they have job openings now for six months, nine months, 18 months, where they can't fill the position. So what we're seeing out there is we're going to these positions and the people who are responsible for that and saying, okay, you're looking for somebody who's got seven to eight years experience in cloud computing or cloud development. And some of the questions we're asking, well, since cloud development was only available in the last three years, you're not going to find somebody with that kind of experience. <laughs> can, we narrow down, can we narrow down what you're looking for and say maybe seven years of management but the last two and a half years of X, Y, Z? And what that's doing is we're revising specs to be more realistic that some of these client companies are having. And we're seeing a ton of results from that as well. But you can only do that when you're a trusted advisor and you can really make sure that you can influence a decision at your client side. 
Right, and understand what they need. Right, right, absolutely. Well, here we go, John. Here's a question that just popped in. Let me get that in front of us here. So Becky asks, you mentioned using RPM with Big Biller. Uh, I'm not seeing this on my Big Biller page. Can we talk about where to find that? Yeah, Becky uh, and John, I'll just speak up. You, you need to get in touch with uh, RPM-USA first and kind of understand uh, how to get that all rolling. So, John, they can just go out to RPM-USA.com and, uh, and get information on that, correct? Absolutely. Uh, and it's www.RPM-USA.com. And then Connie Collette will be in touch. And the exciting thing about that is uh, based on how people are getting data, so we're getting data from multiple systems. So we're getting phone system data, we're getting uh, big biller data, we maybe get data from some other source. We have a, a plan where we get the data and there's different methodologies to input that data based on what you want to track. But we have a consultant, Connie Collette, that walks through that with you to make it easy and painless. And we've done this thousands of times already with, with multiple different types of technology systems. Yeah, so that's the way to start, get a rock and roll. And then we work directly with uh, RPM USA, works directly with Big Veller on making all that happen. You got it. You got it. Uh, Dave asks, John, um, John, how do you manage getting more quality job information from large clients with internal recruiting staff who may be overworked or may not be able to give you the third-party recruiter stuff, access uh, that, that you need with the hiring unit? Yeah, and that's a great question because a lot of times an internal recruiter does not know all the data they need and they're overworked and underpaid. And uh, Well, basically our rule is this. Uh, I will be more than happy to work with an internal recruiter or HR as long as I have the conversation, have to have a conversation uh, with the hiring manager. And the uh, internal recruiter can be on the phone. I don't, I don't mind. But I'm going to ask very, very, very tough questions, and my staff will, of the hiring manager. Because here's what we found. It was an interesting study. This was back in 2003 or 2004. Economies rocking and rolling. I mean, money for nothing, chicks for free. It was one of those environments where, I mean, it, 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 this economy was rocking. All right. Well, here's what happened. Uh, we did analysis of like, two, it might have been 2004 or 5, I'm not sure. But we did analysis of every account we work with HR and didn't have access to the hiring managers in every account we had working directly with hiring managers. And, and, and the ratio wasn't even, it was like 10 to 1 with HR, and it was like 2 to 1 with, uh, with hiring managers. Oh. So we just made a rule. Um, we're not going to shut HR and general recruiters out, but we've got to talk directly with hiring managers to get the real skinny. I mean, HR is going to focus on degrees, and, and the hiring manager is going to focus on, well, I need somebody who's got the experience doing exactly what I need to do. I don't care if they went to Southern Methodist University or Harvard or Michigan State. I, I want to make sure that they've done what I want them to do. So it tells us really when the hiring manager conversation happens, what's the most important thing to them, which is all we need to focus on. So that helps out direct, directly. So the question would be, you know, really the answer to that would be, you know, you really need to focus on at least a conversation with a hiring manager to understand. Uh, a couple more here in the queue here, John. Roosevelt asks, uh, how do you feel about finder's fees uh, for people that help you uh, find folks, and do you have a percentage that you give on that? Yeah, great question, and, I, and, and my philosophy changed uh, 100%. I, I was not into finder's fees uh, at all until just recently. And then uh, True Staff has, has, a, uh, has a history of very successfully using finder fee philosophy very, very well. All right, and here's how we pay out. Uh, first of all, for a name, um, zero, zero. Name and phone number, zero. However, somebody gives a name, phone number, and an email and phone introduction, I'll give them a stipend. So typically if the candidate give me another candidate and we're successfully making a placement, we may float that candidate a small, small, uh, small something. We like to get away with a Starbucks card for 50 bucks, but sometimes it has to be send them a check for 150, 250 bucks. But other than that, I mean, if you think about what they're doing, they're making somebody's life uh, much better off, and they can get a small bonus because of that. If somebody wants a thousand dollars, then I'm not real interested. If somebody gives me a name, I'm not interested because I got everybody's name now on LinkedIn, Jigsaw. 
uh, Zoom Info CE edition, which is Community Edition. I got them all anyways. So I got their names. If you give me that warm introduction in an email and convince them that this may be the right thing to do, yeah, I think it may be worth a little something. Excellent. So that's Excellent. how we work it today. Yeah. Uh, James asks, how often have you gone back to a client to requalify a job, John? Uh, he says, I have a few jobs I want to get rid of or requalify them so that we can fill them. Yeah, uh, typically I'll go back every time they're not looking at my uh, not looking at my candidates. So um, no, number one, when I fill out the job order matrix, and we do this on almost every job order, if I see there are a lot of holes, we go back. Uh, and the job order matrix is a great tool because you can find out, it, ask you questions about sense of urgency, do I know the fit, have we worked with the client before, compensation range, is it in the pay scale uh, from what the general market is. It asks great questions, and, and if you honestly answer that, it tells you where the holes are. If it's a bad job order matrix that comes back, meaning scoring less than 40, we go back and requalify. Other than that, if we're not getting visibility on candidate submittals, meaning they're not moving on them within a very, very short period of time, then we go back, reset expectations, and requalify. Uh, because I tell you what, I mean, if you if you develop those nice relationships with your clients, and all of a sudden they place somebody there, they don't want to tell you bad news. I don't want to make Todd mad. I, he's my friend. I, I don't want to tell the bad news that I just placed my brother-in-law at this position he's been working on. So I'm going to hold off today to do that. But so that's when you got to go back and requalify when everything when you're not getting the movement you need on candidate flow and candidate submissions. And then once the the, the job order or search assignment gets old, like over two weeks, before you work on it, you better requalify to make sure nothing happens to that thing. Excellent. John, one last question here. Carolyn asks, do you have a place where you can learn about these technology tools that you mentioned? Uh, specifically, you mentioned something about a, a Google backdoor to LinkedIn. Uh, and are these tips and tools available on your website? Yeah, uh, you know, they are. I mean, all of those things are available. Is another, I hate to say this, because I, I think I'm selling stuff. I, I got shoes I'm selling, too. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, it's a... Uh, it's a, if you want to, just email me, and the process documents uh, from a uh, planning and research guide process document, it's a very simple $4 thing, uh, has the uh, search keys. There's also, I developed the 2011 planning and research guide that has all of those tools in it as well. But now that you mention that, I, I'm going to actually develop a cheat sheet, sheet so I can send them to you. Uh, I'm going to figure that out. Uh, Shally Circle does a great job on these. Brownbagrecruiter.com is phenomenal uh, at these things. Um, Aris, uh, A I R, I think it's A I R S, yep, Air Sourcing, yep. does a great job of training about this stuff. Um, the the, uh, the the actual show that you go to on website that has a lot of this is SourceCon, uh, that teaches you all these tools that are out there. Um, it's real important that you know this stuff. And if you want to email me, like if you want to know the back door to Google, just email me and I'll send it right to you what the key search terms are so you can get a hold of everybody off LinkedIn and not have to having that beefed up LinkedIn membership. And you can even just Google that one, John. You're right. You just Google how to search LinkedIn using Google. You can get 100 uh, shortcuts on how to do that. Well, once again, John, you just, you just every time we have you, you come and just – uh, spread your knowledge and, and uh, you, you do it uh, so easily and so fluently. Make it easy for us all to understand. I want to thank you for your time. Folks, uh, again, go look up John either at johnpontos.com or rpm-usa.com. And, uh, you know, take, if you ever get a chance to see John out in public, take it. It's a great session. He always over promise, uh, no, under promises and over delivers. Uh, just like you did today. John, thanks again. Everybody else, have a super fantastic day. Great. Thanks, Todd.